Hey everyone, this is Lisa from TRW, and in this video, I am going to be placing a quote using FDC vinyl in white on this floating frame. So I'm gonna talk about how I set up my quote to make sure it fit, and I'm also going to be using the reverse weeding technique to make sure I can weed out these teeny tiny little sections in those small font. Okay, so I am in my Silhouette Studio. Now, I did some testing around before I went and opened this just because I'm kind of picky about my fonts. So, um, kind of showing you what I did is I typed out my text right here. So I typed it out, it says, two pilgrims treading this highway of life together, hand in hand, heart linked to heart. And the first thing that I did is I made a square that will represent the size of the glass that I'm working with. So this is just under seven and a half inches wide. I want my design to be pretty wide but I also want some margin so I made it just a little bit smaller than it needs to be now you can see I have my text over here all around on the side I went and tested a whole bunch of different fonts that I thought would look nice with it after all of the testing I landed on this font right here in the middle so I haven't welded it yet it's called huh girls um, I bought it a long time ago so now that I'm happy with this I'm just gonna go ahead right click and weld this now don't forget when you weld things together, what it does is it welds your overlapping lines but doesn't group them together. So I'm gonna very quickly, while it's all still selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a compound path. Now don't forget what a compound path does is it takes a whole bunch of your lines and shapes and combines it into one big object. So we're gonna go over there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that same process with the name at the bottom. This one I did in Kafiris Slim Regular. So I'm gonna weld that and then go ahead, right click and make compound path. And so just to be safe, I like to take my entire design and I'm gonna make this a compound path together. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with the square. And the reason why I'm cutting it with the square is it just gives it an easier way for me to weld it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you have something like this, where you have a bunch of different text in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit Control Z for a little bit um, to basically get this ungrouped. I can use something called weed lines to help with the process of cutting this. So I'm gonna keep this ungrouped and just select it all at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to weld this right here. So these are all separate right now. So I can select this right here and I'm gonna go into my advanced settings and this is part of business edition right down here. And we're gonna go over and we're gonna do our weed lines. So we're gonna turn on our weed lines and we're gonna do uh, recursive. So that can go through like pretty much everything. Or we can go through horizontal vertical. So we see this going on here. We're gonna check this only shapes on media. So you can see it's not showing a whole bunch in there. Let's see if I can delete this box. So you can see it does this right here. Now that I've looked at this, I don't really like the weed line, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn them off and just cut it this way right on here. So I'm gonna go ahead, set this up over here, and I'm gonna set up my vinyl in my Cameo, and we're, gonna get, we're going to get cutting. So over here in the send panel, we're just gonna review my cut settings. I am not cutting glitter. I'm gonna go over, and I'm gonna bring this down to my preset for FDC vinyl. Now don't forget, I always recommend uh, programming your own custom cut settings. I'll link a video below on how to program your own cut settings and I'll link my video that I did for FDC vinyl for you down there. So I'm gonna go ahead, load my material and then I'm going to cut. Okay, so my design is all cut. You may notice that I did pick out a couple sections on the inside here. I just wanna make sure they came out all right. So you'll notice that I picked a very skinny font because why would I choose something easy? You know, I like to push my boundaries. So what we're going to do with this is we are actually going to reverse weed this. What this does is I'm going to take a piece of transfer tape and I'm going to cut it and apply it to the whole decal, the sections I'm keeping and the sections I'm not. And the idea of this is that the bond to the transfer tape is stronger than the bond of your decal to the, um, to the backing. So it'll give you more, um, I don't know, I don't know, like a more sure grip on this. I don't know why I blanked on my words, but it'll, it'll be a little bit easier to weed. So I'm gonna put this down as close as I can to the bottom. And I have a little extra here, so I'm gonna cut one more piece. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this excess over here. I'm gonna trim this over to the side. And we're gonna use this to get these words here because this is just the text at the bottom. So now we have our transfer tape down. I can flip this over 
and roll this off. So I got a little section that came up with it. So I'm going to take this and kind of roll this the other way. And again, this is kind of something that happens with a really thin font. When you do something like this, you know, most of the time you want to use a thicker one. But again, I like to push my limits. So if you have one that comes up that shouldn't, you just kind of use your weeding tool to hold it down. And now I'm just going to go uh, very gently and start lifting off in areas that I know I can get it off. I'm going to use my weeding tool to reach underneath my tape and my vinyl. And we're just going to gently lift like this. And so you can see it kind of came up a little bit with my text. Again, it's skinny. So I'm just going to use my weeding tool to hold down that little part and then keep going. So I'm going to keep going with this and then I'll be back once it's a little bit further along because this part's a little bit boring. So again, you can see I'm just kind of holding this down as it goes. I have a little dot on the eye. These are going to be the parts you want to look out for. So I'm just going to bring this down, hold it down and keep going. So this is also something that if I didn't have my reverse weeding done, this would be even more difficult because it would almost like slide on the backing. So I'm just taking this and I'm using my scissors to kind of trim off this excess so I don't have to worry too much about um, it folding over on itself. So you can see we have this right here. Just going to go ahead, trim this off. Okay, so I finished weeding out this design. You can see we have it right here. Nice thin font because I love making things difficult for myself. And now I have the back panel of the glass that this is going to go on. So we have this here. So this side is open. I painted this side with acrylic paint. So what I did is I put down a peach color and there are little sections where I put some white and some darker color to give it that dimension. I just kind of like slapped it down. All right. So this part's pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and find where to set this up with my design. So it's going to look a little bit crooked for you because I have um, my camera at an angle, but we're just going to go ahead, drop that on there, and bring it like that. Now I'm going to use my scraper, and this is my cool TRW scraper. Uh, it does a really good job. It's nice and like tough, you know, like I haven't really used this too, too much. But I really love it. So we're going to scrape this. Let's go ahead and get this. So you can see it's kind of bringing up this tiny little text. So we're just going to bring it as perpendicular as possible. And roll that off there. Cool. Now we're going to go ahead and roll here too. Just to make sure we're lifting everything properly. So you can see there's going to be little tiny sections where it looks like the vinyl's coming up a little bit. Not a big deal. Just literally roll it back down. And see we have this right here. So we're going to really smooth this right here. <laughs> so that's coming up. So we're going to take our scraper and really go. And I'm going to pull from this side because we don't have as many ends like going out. So you can see all my little tails tend to go the other way. So when you pull from the opposite direction, it gives you a little bit of an easier time. All right, so we have our design here. Now I just want to really make sure it's down all the way. So I'm going to take, this is the paper backing that my vinyl was on. I'm going to take it and put it on top and just smooth some more. So that way I can get some pressure down, but I'm not pulling up on my vinyl. So now we have the inside panel of our floating frame. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together and then I'll show you the final product. 
So there we have it. This is my finished floating frame. So this is with paint on the back and then the vinyl is placed on the back panel. And the reason why I did that is because one, I didn't want to mirror it. So I didn't want to put it on the inside of the front panel. And part of the reason why I didn't want to put it on the inside is I didn't want to risk some dirt or dust or something being underneath the vinyl. And two, I didn't want it on the outside because I didn't want to have to worry about the vinyl scraping or getting kind of tacky when I clean this off because I want to clean this with window cleaner. So if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more tutorial videos with vinyl or with different frames, then go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think.